Hello, dear friends! In one of our recent videos, we got acquainted with the history of aircraft carriers. In this video, I decided to pay special attention to the Soviet project of the flying aircraft carrier. It received a lot of attention because this project has been developed for over 10 years. It was obviously something pretty interesting. And the most important thing is that Zvino project took part in hostilities in World War II. On the 26th of July 1941, the Soviet heavy bomber TB-3 with two fighters I-16 attached to it has made a successful raid on the oil refinery in Romania. This operation became the first serious flight for Zvino SPB complex, which later proved itself in action many times. Works on the creation of a flying aircraft carrier started in the USSR back in 1931, under the leadership of designer Vladimir Vakhamistrov. The task was to increase the fighter aircraft's range with help of a more massive aircraft's fuel supply. In addition, in such a combination, the fighters themselves could be used as dive bombers. They could be equipped with heavy bombs, which they could not lift on their own. The first successful flight of Zvino project took place in December 1931. The carrier aircraft was the TB-1 bomber to the wings of which the I-4 fighters were attached from above. By the way, one of them at the time was operated by legendary Valery Chikalov. He was a Soviet test pilot, brigadier general and hero of the Soviet Union. He was the commander of the crew of the plane that made the first non-stop flight over the North Pole from Moscow to America in 1937. Three years later, Zvino project was tested in a new configuration. The TB-1 was replaced by the TB-3, which already carried three fighters, two on the wings and one on the fuselage. As a result, several variants of Zvino project were tested for almost a decade. In one of them, the number of fighters attached to the flying aircraft carrier reached five pieces, two on top and three on the bottom. But in the end, in 1938, the Zvino SPB complex was adopted, where SPB is for compound dive bomber. The TB-3 acted as an aircraft carrier under the wings of which there were two I-16 fighters, and each of them could carry two 250 kg bombs. Thanks to this combination, the fighter's range increased by 80%, and the range of the complex was 2,500 km, so their bomb load increased fivefold at once. Initially, it was planned that within two years, 40 such complexes would be built, 20 for the Air Force and 20 for the Navy, but in fact only 5 were put into operation. All were based in Yevpatoria and assigned to the Soviet Black Sea Fleet. Immediately after the German attack on the Soviet Union, one of the main targets of Soviet aviation in the southern direction was the Chernovada Bridge over the Danube. It had to be bombed to slow down the Romanian advance. Several initial attempts were made using conventional bombers, but all failed, after which the decision was made to use aircraft carriers. As a training mission and in fact the first combat sortie in history, one Zvino SPB was assigned to bomb an oil refinery in Constanta. And this mission was successfully accomplished. On the 26th of July 1941, the TB-3 with two I-16s on board approached the target at a distance of 40 km and then detached the fighters. Their appearance in the sky over Romania was a complete surprise, because previously Soviet fighters had not flown so far, and at first enemies mistaken them for their own planes. This allowed the crews of the I-16 to bomb the target, after which they landed in Odessa for refueling and then quietly returned to Yevpatoria. Two weeks later, the bridge across the Danube was also attacked with the help of two Zvino SPB complexes. The bridge was again attacked on the 13th of August, with the assistance of three Zvino SPBs. As a result, the bridge sustained significant damage and the goal of the operation was achieved. Zvino SPB flew several more times, not less than five. 
It was used to strike at columns of German troops and important objects in the nearest enemy rear. But the subsequent fights showed that the planes of Zvinov were hopelessly outdated. This applied both to the carrier aircraft and dive fighters. They risked becoming victims of high-speed German Messerschmitt fighters every minute. The remaining TB-3s were used as transport planes. In addition, the situation at the front became so complicated that there was no time to experiment with the NOP project. Soon, Soviet industry established mass production of PE-2 twin-engine bombers, which began to attack targets that earlier were attacked with the help of Zvino SPB. After that, the NOP project was finally forgotten. That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please support it with your likes and don't forget subscribe to the channel. See you all later!